While the GTX was known as the gentleman's muscle car, not in this case. 1968 GTX, 444 speed convertible. This is one of only 375 built. This car has manual steering and manual drum brakes. Fortunately, it's owned by former world wrestling champion Bill Goldberg. And trust me, it takes a Bill Goldberg to drive a car like that. This time on Graveyard Cars, Alyssa works her way around the shop, helping Will block and prep the Phantom Cuda for final paint. You're gonna help me? Yeah. Okay. If you're my trainer, right? Well, you gotta teach me. <laughs> and assisting Day with taillight and bumper installations on the one of one 1969 Hemi Roadrunner convertible. And as the deadline draws near, Mark and the Ghouls take World Heavyweight Wrestling Champion Bill Goldberg's 68 GTX convertible for its very first road test. They're coming to get you, Barbara. It has been established that the unburied, the unburied dead, dead are coming back to, coming life. Back to life. I'm Mark Warman, and together we bring dead muscle cars back to life. To exactly the way they were on the day they were born. Mark is getting ready to install the decals on Bill Goldberg's 1968 GTX convertible. This basically is a decal, a double line stripe that goes between the GTX emblem and the right hand fender and the left hand fender. Again, this car gets just a longitudinal white stripe that's basically centered around this GTX opening, comes down, runs the perimeter up to the fender. My pet peeve is crooked stripes, so to make sure the car is straight, I use my Bimpak scissor lift underneath there. That's raised the car up to a level point. So if I take my level, put it on the rocker right there, you'll see that that car is perfectly level in space. I go up to my tape stripe and I'm perfectly level in space. So with that done, I am ready to install. I don't really sweat the, the decal installations. I've been doing them for so long. I, I always hate the billboards. They're a pain in the ass. They're huge, and there's a multitude of problems that can happen with them. But for the most part, stuff like this, a straight line, they're really easy to do. As long as you have your tape marks out and you know exactly where it goes and you use the application gel, should be a piece of cake. Wipe your hand off because, again, if you get your gel on there, you're going to have a problem. You're going to destroy that backing, and then you've got yourself a, a real problem, a real nightmare. Give it one last eyeball to make sure you're not being hallucinated or, or tricked. Once you've done that, holding it very carefully. Once you get to this point, you are committed 100% to the project. There is no turning back, looking around the other way, wondering if you did it right. You're just done. So that's why you wanted to take all that time in prepping to make sure that it was straight. If you put this back one on at the quarter, you say, okay, well, I'm going to center this to the GTX symbol. Oh, that's perfect. That's perfect. That's the best. All you would have to have is this decal off a little bit, meaning let's say you had it going up one half of one millimeter, 0.5 of a millimeter. It's indetectable to the human eye, but it's going up a little bit. If you take that same trajectory and you continue to go up, it increases exponentially. And so by the time you're down here, the decal is half an inch too high, even though it only started out at a half a millimeter off here. Meanwhile, in the body shop, Will Scott preps the legendary Phantom Cuda for its final paint. The Phantom Cuda, this is the one that started the show. This is the one that said nobody, nobody could fix. Uh, we got it back to life, and we're just about ready to start painting. Before I start blocking this car, I'm gonna go get Mark, have him come over, do a sign off on it, then I'll get started. So now I should be able to peel the backing off. How's it going, Will? Good, how are you? Yeah. Ooh, getting some old chrome on there. How many extra sets of stripes did you order for this car? You talking to me? <laughs> yeah. Why don't you worry less about what I'm doing over here and more about what the rest of my shop is Well, I was doing. concerned, but I heard Dave drop something over Don't there. say nothing about number one. <laughs> oh. OK, sorry. Sorry, Dave. Oh. So how many extra sets you get? He's my friend. Can I finish this? I didn't order any extra sets, because I don't need any extra sets. This isn't Marcus. a billboard graphic. Here, grab that. 
Never a good catch, coach. <laughs> so you're pretty right. confident the first time around? Can I finish this? <laughs> so once you have it laid out and into place like it's supposed to be and laid down, now we're just gonna wrap that edge. I do like the crooked look. It looks nice. All right there. It accents the car. Wrap this one around that edge. Beautiful. Who are you talking to? I'm trying to acclimate my audience with how decals go on. <laughs> like last time? <laughs> You know, I know what you're doing, and I don't like it. I love it. Can I, I love it. Can I help you, sir? I'm just checking it out strap. Hey, it looks nice. Thank you. Thank you. Didn't know I had an audience, but keep do we do? I don't think. He doesn't like an audience on these. Well, it's just because this is a very nerve-wracking moment right here when you That's don't want awesome, something right? bad to happen, right? So this car's about done then, huh? It's getting very close to done, but I think there's a car down there that needs painted. <laughs> what the f*** wrong with you? I've seen Danny DeVito jump higher than that. <laughs> Sorry. No, you're fine. <laughs> but in case you're wondering, this is why it's hard for me to get things done. Constant interruptions. Constant, constant, constant. All right, last one to go on is the Fender decal. Put a little app gel on there. Hey, Dad. Good God. We have a client here that needs has a couple questions on their vehicle that I can't answer. Okay. So, if you have a couple minutes, could you go up and talk to him oh, real quick? For the love of God. Yeah. Well, I need to get this on there because I have the application gel. So just tell them it'll be a couple of minutes. Okay. And I'll be up there. I've got to get this put on right now or the world comes to an end. Okay. So, you want me to world. tell him exactly that? Tell him if I don't get this on there right now, the world is coming to an end. <laughs> okay. Yes. Crazy. Nothing bothers me, gentlemen. You guys can run around with all your crazy shit you want to do, whatever. Doesn't matter to me. Makes no difference. I fly ice cold, man. That's, that's why they call me the ice man. While Mark checks in on the customer, Dave gets ready to build out the bumper and taillights for the 1969 Hemi Roadrunner convertible. Uh, right now I'm gonna build out the back bumper. We got this beautiful brand new bumper rather than sending out the originals and having them re-chromed. As you can see in here, I installed a new uh, license plate lens on our original license plate bracket. You can see the old lens here is pretty melted, a bulb got a little hot and then it melted it. It's got the flip down license plate. As you can see, I detailed it all out. I got to install it on here, like so. So you can see those rubber bumpers kind of protect it. We're gonna go ahead and do our reverse lights. This particular car has the reverse lights mounted inside the bumper. If it's been sitting for a while, it looks terrible. Get it on the buffer wheel with some buffing compound and I can get it buffed down to where it looks just like chrome. Uh, so it'll look fantastic when it's done. Bezels came out beautiful, just a little bit of time on the, the buffer wheel. So now I just got to get the new gaskets in there, get my lenses in there, they're all cleaned up, the retainers, and then these babies will be ready to bolt in there. All right, next thing we're going to be doing is the taillights. The lenses that we got were just beautiful. I mean, but one thing we noticed whenever we had these apart was that this one right here is painted silver on the side, and this one wasn't. The whole purpose of painting the side of this is whenever it's inside the car, you light that up, it's gonna shine out all around your bezel. So by painting that edge, it focuses all that energy of that light to come out the back part of the lens, which in a sense is gonna make your car a little bit safer and a lot easier to see. Okay, all I gotta do is take the backing tape, the backing uh, off of this tape right here, and then this side's done, turn it around. Oh, those nice customers, they actually have a 69 GTX I'm working on. How's it on. come in? Good. Just peeling this off and I am done. Oh. How can I help you? Just checking it out, it looks good. Yeah, it does look good. So, with this body style, how the door is kind of like a dish? Yeah, it goes in like this right here and then it jets back out again. Yeah. Yep. So is that gonna make this appear maybe like it's not straight from some angle? Well, maybe if somebody else was putting it on, but not if I'm putting it on. A pet peeve for me is always, if they're not perfect, they just, it drives me insane. Absolutely crazy. I can't, I can't think of anything except why that person put them on crooked. Yeah? I think it's because it dives in right here that you're thinking it, like it's a little high right here in the crown. No. From right here, the top one just looks a little bit closer, like the space between the box, that right free space between them. It's not as perfect, trust me. Good, okay. Hey, do you have something else you can be doing? Anything I know, else? that's why I came. I didn't, I didn't need you to come out and tell no. me it, it looked like <laughs> No, it looks good, I just. 
I got the passenger side on okay on uh, Goldberg's car. It's a pain in the ass. They're always a pain in the ass. It makes it 10 times harder when people come by and torture you. It's a great time to take a break. So I'm gonna take a break and I'm gonna go do some torturing. Go pay it forward. Isn't it, wasn't there a movie about paying it forward? I'm gonna go pay the torturing forward. That's what I do. Mark checks in on Will as he preps the Phantom Cuda for its final paint. This is the one that started the show, so everyone's going to be looking at it to critique it, so we just got to make sure this car is perfect from top to bottom. Willy Wonka! Nope, just, just Will still. Willy! What's happening? I found your sister's car. <laughs> I'm kidding. Is that what the way we start, start our day? <laughs> it's going to start that night. Well, it's uh, a little bit funny. Going through, fine-tuning everything, making sure it's all ready to go. Oh! About ready. Oh! They're doing torque box stuff on the other side? Yeah, they got the torque boxes going in, so that'll be done here momentarily. And then just scotch part a few things, and then I can... What are you doing? Roll this in the booth and start masking it up, getting it ready. Gotcha. <laughs> I get it. I... I... <laughs> you just looking for a are, final QC? Are, Is that why no, you called me out no, here? No, no, I'm not. Okay. I thought we covered that with the whole you just sign checks thing. Yeah, okay. I'm not just a check signer. I'm a QC guy. You guys need me out here. You no, we want don't. me I, out no, here. No, we, I promise. You need me on that wall. Have you looked at our crew? Yeah, we got a great crew. We got a great crew. We're getting stuff done. I don't, I don't, no, I don't need you. I don't need you. Dave doesn't need you. Mike, your office needs you. He comes out with a little magnifying glass, plays around a little bit, but yeah, he's just, uh, he's writing checks these days. That's about the extent of his work. You know, that hurts what are you bit. saying? Are you saying that I'm a, a five foot, 11 inch, 180 pound check signer? We're like five, five, 250. <laughs> like Danny DeVito. Say no more. Okay. You know what? Say no more. You have a good day. Don't say anything else. I can't wish. No. All I do. Good day, boss. All I do. Zippity doo da. All I do. Lottie frickin' da. All I do is sign checks. His job is strictly signing checks. That's it. That's all he's needed for at this point. Don't come to me when you need something, because all I do well, my check. is sign. I'll come to you for my checks. checks. F you. <laughs> Turn around, you <laughs> billboard. What are you laughing about? It's like it's like signing the back of a Volkswagen. <laughs> Thanks, boss. Don't call me. I won't. I'll call you. I know. I mean, that's why he pays us good. He's got a good crew here. We don't need him, so I don't foresee any reason for me needing to come up there and get him. Meanwhile, Dave is installing the front headlights into the 1969 Hemi Roadrunner convertible. We're looking pretty good on the Roadrunner. I'm getting ready to build out the front end of the car, still waiting on the front bumper. So I'm gonna go ahead and get kind of a jump start on it and uh, start getting the headlights in. So this is your high beam with the two prongs. That's all it does is a high beam. And then this one right here with the three prong is a low beam and a high beam. So when you push that foot switch on your four, which in this you know, year of car, you actually have a four act you know, operated switch. When you hit that, it'll switch this to a high beam and it'll send power to this high beam. So it'll actually light up you know, the sky really well. So that's the way our system works. The first thing uh, I'm gonna do is go ahead and get all the headlight adjuster screws in. It's just mainly a base piece that snaps in uh, to the fender of the car you know, in the headlight uh, bucket area. And it's got an adjuster screw, and then I'll sort out the headlight buckets. Uh, they go specific sides and for specific headlight. So once you get it dialed in, know where it goes, you can go ahead and place it in there and uh, just get to putting the headlights in. So now I'll go ahead and put my bulb in. Start with the regular beam. Make sure that's all the way in there. Then that'll go in there and lock into our bucket like that. Take our ring, and these go on a certain way, so you kind of hold them up there to make sure you get them in the right spot. Get those on there like so. So there's that headlight. Now we get our high beam on there, like so. Snap that baby on there. That'll go in and lock into place. Now you can upgrade uh, to a sealed beam halogen, which is substantially brighter. Or what a lot of guys are doing now is you can upgrade these to that, uh, it's like that xenon. So what you would get is you get a piece of glass. It's like a headlight, but it's just a, a, the glass headlight itself. Then you actually have the bulb that snaps in there and you get those blue lights or those really cool uh, xenon 
halogens, those super bright ones, and the, the bulb will actually snap into the back of this headlight. So you still have your bezel, everything will look cool. It's just got a different style of uh, headlight on it. It won't have the same texturing that these factory ones do. But uh, there you have it. There's one side done. You got your regular beam with your high beam and then your standard high beam. So, yep, that's it. With the driver set installed, Dave finishes the passenger side to wrap up the build out of the front headlight setup. Looks cool. Seems like the rotor has eyes. It always looks better when you get the headlights in there. For such a little detail, it, it makes the car look like it's come so far. It's one more piece to the puzzle, and uh, these little pieces here uh, kind of bring the car to life. The Ghouls have been restoring a 1970 burnt orange 446 barrel track pack Cuda. With metalwork, jam work, and bodywork complete, Will is giving the car a quality control check in preparation for primer. They got all the bodywork done on it, it's ready for primer. All the seam sealing's already been done ahead of time. So the car overall looks really good. Um, we've got a few patch panels, got it all dialed in. Really hey, delicious. Will, what's going on, buddy? What's up, George? My yeah. boy, George. You see what I did there? Yeah, I, my I boy, noticed. My boy, I, George. Yeah, I noticed. Yeah. What do you think of the reveals, bud? Dude, it looks good. Yeah. You know, it doesn't look too bad. The lines look good. The gaps are good. There's not a ton of Bondo on it. You can actually see it. You guys did a good job on it. Getting ready to paint it? No, I'm getting ready to roll this in the booth, get the first coat of primer on it, and then I can start doing my color. Because I know this is a tricky color, I'm gonna go ahead and get the paint ordered and start tinting that color so we can start, kind of get it out of the way now. Well, how do you think it's gonna go with Mark? Shit, it's not gonna go good. I call him a check right son of a bitch, so um, don't think it's gonna go that well. Good luck. Yeah, I'm gonna need it. Hey, did you get the uh, paint ordered for, for the, what? Bur the burnt orange, the FK5? I need three gallons of I that. I haven't. OK, you want to get that I going? have not ordered it yet. I wasn't sure when you would be ready for it, so. I'm ready. What do you Checks. think, three gallons of DBC? Yeah. I think all I am is a check signer. Oh, dear god, are you kidding? That's all I can do, sign checks. I'm How? signing checks. So, so you've been up in your office? Signing checks? Literally just signing checks. Is there something else you wanted? Yeah, why don't you go to the paint? I can't do that. Okay. All I am is a check signer. All right, well, uh, I see that you've five, four, gone one, three, a little four, too four, far oh, with seven, this. Three, four, I think is the number you're looking for. Tell her it's FK5. If you need any help, I'll be up here. Signing checks. Signing checks. <laughs> All right. All righty, bye-bye. So I guess I got to order the paint myself now. He just goes from one extreme to another. You know, with this whole check writing thing, that's fine. But you know, you still do need his help for some things, you know, ordering the materials. He's gonna take it to that level, so I guess I'll just go ahead and get, get the paint ordered. Alyssa checks in on Dave while working on the 1969 Hemi Roadrunner convertible. Hey Alyssa, how's it going? Going good, what are you working on? Uh, working on uh, assembling these tail lights for this beautiful 69 Roadrunner. We got these brand new babies there from OER. Those look great. Beautiful. Yeah. Roadrunner looks a lot different since the last time I saw it. Doesn't it look great? Yeah, I think we just put the engine in. Yeah, yeah, just put the Jeez. motor in. You helped me put that awesome grabber system in there. Remember I was telling you how it ran off of an air grabber cable? Yeah. That goes through there. Here's that cable right there. It runs through the firewall and it hooks up to that. So when you pull that car bear, knob underneath the dash, it opens up those flaps and brings our air in for our air grabber system. That's so cool. Pretty cool, huh? Well, what are you installing right now? Uh, pretty much we're gonna do these taillight lenses. I mean, if you wanna give me a hand, yes. I'd appreciate the help. Okay. Uh, this one here's in good shape because it's all painted. I got one over at the shop uh, for Will to paint, but what we do need is done that, on these. You, is that what you mean when you say painted? Yeah, yeah, I'll just okay. put some silver paint on there. These need to be cleaned up a little bit, but if you kind of look at this lens, it's, see how you can see just really fine scratches in them? Mm -hmm. That's just from wiping them off over the years. But what we'll have Will do is uh, buff these out really good. So if you wanted to bring those back there to him, he's got one back there already that he painted. If you wanted to bring this one back there to him, maybe sure. he can uh, get him buff, to buff them. it out. Yeah, okay. that would be great. And then yeah. we can uh, get those put together and get them put in the car. Okay, sounds That'd be good. cool. Thanks. He's such a <laughs> I have a taillight for you. I don't know if Dave's talked to you about buffing this out. No, but he brought the other one over so I could paint it. You need it buffed out? Yeah, if you're not too busy. I'm always too busy, but not too it? busy for you, my oh, friend. Thank you. This reminds me of a, like, face scrub. 
kind of does the same things for your pores. But you don't use it? I do do. You do do? I do use it. You say do do. <laughs> you know. You hate me? Yes. Wow, that's hurtful. Still needs to be the other way, just like the last one. Hi. You're about as fun to work with as my dad. Well, no, but we already did this the <clears throat> that time. <laughs> I thought you would. He was trying to get the rubbing compound all over me, trying to be funny. So he was like angling it, putting the compound on and then angling it towards me so it would like shoot it. Will's nice to me, but he's also like a big brother, so he likes to pick on me a lot too. So now that we got the lights buff, I'm gonna get them over to Dave and hopefully I can help him get them on the car. There you go. All right. Got a light clean and you are ready to install those. All right, we got them all done. All right. Back from Will. How do they look? They look beautiful, they look brand new. Well, good deal. Well, yeah, let's bring them over to the table here. They're supposed to be stud screwed in the back of them. So I went ahead and put these ones in. If you want to flip that one upside down, okay. there's the studs right there. And what you can do is run those studs all the way down until they bottom out. You can kind of do it by hand. They, they seem to thread in there pretty good. And usually we repaint these because the chrome is pretty bad. And these look fantastic. So we're just going to leave them alone. Whoever had this car, I mean, it was obviously garaged and just well taken care of, you know which makes a big difference. All right, y'all, how they going in? Pretty good? Yeah, this easy. Is bottomed out. Awesome. All right, so that's done. When we install those, this bezel should go from the outside, and then this whole unit right here will actually go from the inside. So if you kind of put the lens in, yep, right there. And if you kind of just hold it with your back hand, and then I'll mm -hmm. slide this in the front. So it'll go real easy in here. You can set those. There, there you go. go. Looks good. All the way in? Yep. All right. Oh, it's nice. It does. All right. And see how there's a little bit of a gap around in there? Yeah, I was that's just why ask. that's why you gotta paint that that lens. Oh. They don't sit dead flush. They'll they'll come in a little bit tighter when we screw it in. This is the nervous part is when you're putting pieces on. Yeah. And it's already painted. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, high stress level in this department. Okay. Cool. We're good. Doesn't that look great? Yeah. And I'll go ahead and start tightening. Are we going to be able to turn them on when we're done? No, I don't have any of the Power wiring yet. for that. Uh -huh. It's almost flush. And once that that big thick foam gasket squishes in there, it'll, it'll be, be more flush. it'll be really tight in there. Yeah. So how do you like working back here in the assembly? I think it's my favorite part so far. Is it? Yeah. Cool. That's my favorite it's part. It's easy for it's easy for me to learn. Easy to pick up on stuff. All right. Whereas, so like, working on an engine, you know, you don't get that instant gratification. Yeah. Unless you get to start it, but, like, here, when you get that, like, when I put the interior in, it was like, felt like Isn't I made the cool? car. I know. Yeah. Then you yeah. jump in there and you're like, yeah, this is awesome. <laughs> Even though I didn't do the body work, the paint work, like, That's still all right. felt like. Yeah, everybody yeah. pitches in. It's a group effort. And then we end up with a finished product. Then we all get to jump in and go for a ride. How cool is that? But that looks awesome. It does. That looks good. See how that thing came right out? Oh, yeah. Just one little piece like that just totally makes a car. Doesn't get any better than that. All right. Well, we got our bumper all built out, so we'll get it on our little stand here. We're going to just kind of flip it up and stand it up into where it's like these brackets are going to be pointing towards the car. So it's going to sit and kind of cradle it right here. Yep, about like that. But it kind of helps us to uh, get the thing where we need it. Stabilize it, help yeah. lift it for you so you're not trying to like hold the weight of it and trying to place it. Exactly, because you can scratch it really easy on these edges. What we're looking for is these two bolt holes right here are gonna go right into these oblong holes. The two that you lubed up? Yeah, I take some tape. I just kind of lay it in there so you can still see like the edge of the car, because we want to try to get it as even as we can. Okay. But this will keep it from scratching the car. All right. So we'll go in nice and easy. Keep your hand wrapped around that. So go ahead and go in a little bit. You're a little high over there, right? And yeah. I'm not. I'm not bad. So let's drop it down a little bit. Keep your fingers like bit around the, the edge of it. And I'm gonna okay. look underneath here. I won't pinch your fingers. Okay. I'm gonna see how close our holes are here. I'm gonna slide all the way over here. Now that lined up perfect. Boy, we got lucky. Run these in just a little bit. 
I didn't realize there was so much room for adjusting on bumpers. Yeah. So what we'll do now is I'll just snug these bolts down a little bit. We'll make sure that our adjustment didn't move. If we have to, we'll readjust it, tighten everything down, get our stand out of there, and we should be in good shape. Okay, nice. Oh, cool. Easy, easy. Yeah. Now for the finishing touch. You know what the finishing touch is? The license plate. License plate. Yeah, this bumper is beautiful. They do such a nice job on their chrome work. Got all new gaskets and everything, and all our lights, all our bolts polished up. You know what looks brand new? Everything does. Yeah, it looks great. Thanks, Alyssa. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. Thank you for showing me. Oh, yeah. Hey, boss. Just about got them all signed. Do you? <laughs> hey, um, I'm looking for the formula. Where did you document everything when you tinted the FK5 on the 70 Hemi charge? On the burnt orange? Yeah. That's What's where that? I have it written down at. You didn't write it down? Right there. I don't need to write it down. I write it down in my mind. I, I just need to go over something with you. You need my help? I mean, that's a way to put it. You need a check? <laughs> no, I don't need a check. You need help tinting the color? I, Maybe just come out and just sign off on it. Move on, all right? You really should write that stuff down. Right, but just, I, I would have known if I... Mm. Don't, don't apologize, buddy. Everybody needs the old man once I'm not apologizing. You know what I'm saying? Everybody this is just that, help from Dad. Right, but this is just that one. Daddy's here. And no, I just figured as a time saver, you've already worked on this, so uh, why not just have you come out here and get this knock? This your color? Yeah, that is. Mm. <laughs> Mm, mm, mm. God, you love it, don't you? Mm. Do, mm. Why the why the magnifying glass? Got lights, huh? Mm. We're looking at small things. Mm -hmm. Good. Mm-hmm. What does mm-hmm mean? You wanna weigh it? Don't believe I will need to, sir. Oh. How much you put in there? Why don't you reduce it and spray your car? Oh, that's it? So I can shoot the whole car with no spray when out? The assembly line went down, old Hank Ford walked down there and for a million bucks, he pushed the right button. Call me Hank. With Mark's ego inflated, he decides to tackle the driver's side decal for Bill Goldberg's GTX convertible. So we start taking... Yeah, I gotta let the car down and we don't wanna back it off onto the ground that high. Oh, no. Yeah, I got goo goo. Yeah, I got goo goo. All right, so I'm just laying out that second stripe now. Once I have the, the guideline for it, then I will be able to uh, apply it and move to the next venture, which is going to be installing the information decals on it, and it'll be done. What's happening, boss? Making it perfect, baby. Is it perfect? Oh, ho, ho. Who's gonna put your stripes on when I'm gone? You know what I'm saying? Uh-oh. Just beautiful. Uh-oh. Absolutely gorgeous. Oh, no. Oh, I get it. Oh, okay. geez. I see, all right. Uh-oh. Hey, boss. Boss. Right. Do you want me to, I mean, I don't, do you want me to fix this? All right, I got it. You guys, can you guys zoom in on the problem here? He said the car was perfect, but luckily I had my glasses and my magnifying glass handy. You can see where that edge is rolled up. That was close. You were gonna send that out looking less than perfect. Good thing I carry my magnifying glass and my glasses. Here to help you out, boss. You all done? Uh, it looks better now, yeah, but that was, whew. Mr. Goldberg would have been upset about that. Cool. I'm gonna finish doing my job. You right. take care. You get back to doing whatever it is you were doing? I was just coming to check the stripe. And you're gonna need that magnifying glass when you go to the restroom, so keep it in your pocket. We already used that the last time you used it? No. Yep. No. Oh, no. That's an original joke. No, I used that last time. You said that I had to use that yeah. to find my wiener? Yeah. <laughs> we did last time. So you can't. Well, for the record, I most certainly don't. I just thought it was awkward you carry glasses and magnifying glass in your pocket. Well, it's not to find my wiener. What the hell's wrong with you, man? 
With the stripe finished on the GTX, and while Will waits for the impossible handmade FK5 burnt orange paint to finish drying, Will jumps onto finishing the block and sanding of the Phantom Cuda. Hey. What are you doing? <laughs> um, getting this car sanded out? Why? Not that I don't have anything going on. Nothing? Can help. You're going to help me? Yeah. I've been telling you I want to get out and learn how to paint and stuff, no, so no, isn't this once. part of it? No, you said you okay, wanted... Okay, I'm telling my dad. You said you wanted to come paint. I'm not painting today. Well, my dad said that I have to learn how to prep first. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh, cool. And this looks like a great opportunity. Yeah, but this is a Phantom Cuda. Are you smart enough to do this? I really don't like teaching anyone how to do this. Um, I don't have the patience for it, the time for it. But it is Alyssa, she's like my sister, so I don't mind having her come out and working with me for a little bit. And you block it. Kind of like a giant X. Okay. And you go back this way. Sounds like too tough. It doesn't look too tough. No. Flat, yeah. Mm -hmm. Keep it flat. And do you have the same amount of pressure on? Mm -hmm. On the block, all nice and even. I mean, this is the Fanta Cuda. This is the car that started the whole show. So I'm a little nervous to touch it because I feel like if I mess anything up, my dad and Will are going to kill me. Okay, we're not I cutting hair. I know, I don't feel like it's doing much. Well, you have dust coming off, so it is doing something. So try to keep it blocked. Okay. Right like that, going like that. Oh, okay. Uh, we're in the home stretch now with Mr. Goldberg 68 GTX. Everything has been done to the cart. The alignment's been done. The final decals have been installed, and we've done an overall outside and inside inspection. So for what's left, we're just gonna check the engine oil, antifreeze level, make sure the coolant's up, Transmission fluid level and the rear end fluid level, the rear end grease. Royal's putting in a couple of grease circs we missed. After that, he'll grease that front suspension. Uh, also, I see we need a cotter pin in the idler arm. I saw that. Now. Okay. All right, clutch looks good, all the clutch linkage. We've got our brake line downstream. All the clips are in place. Emergency brakes tight. Leaf spring hangers are good. Tank, good. Uh, you see that grease on my finger? That means that just reaching inside there with my pinky finger inside the filler hole, if I can touch grease, it's full enough. You don't want it over that point. So the differential is good. Take my finger, put it inside there, see if I can find the level. No. This movie didn't get topped off. Nope. We are low on transmission gear oil. And, you, and the cool Bad. thing with sandpaper, because I know you're doing this and then starting over, it'll sand going backwards. So. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't understand why we're blocking a perfectly painted car. I mean, why ruin a perfectly good paint job? If Will could just maybe do it right the first time, we wouldn't be here right now. Okay, am I doing it right or are you just You're getting there, just make it more natural. Just. We do it this way because this is the way we do it. She's not gonna come out here and give us some little song and dance about doing it, painting it right the first time. We do it the steps the way we do it to make sure it comes out perfect and they do doing it this way. Oh. Just, just, it's just, yeah, just, okay. just natural. Like you that? Want the, the, huh? Right, but it shouldn't be jumping across the car. It should just okay. be a nice, even. Show me again. Oh, that's fine, that's fine. Uh, we're just going to check the oil here real quick, and actually, your oil's over there. You want to check the oil? I'll check the the coolant level here, the water level, as long as we got a good level in here. Half a quart low. Half quart low. Well, that's what we're going to throw in her. Look at that, brand new chrome oil cap. See the difference? It doesn't matter the way it looks. Like, do you have to go and feel it? Like, what's the technique? How do you know when you're done? Um, so you remember when we started right here? And we were blocking and you still saw it was still kind of shiny? Mm -hmm. When you keep blocking and it's no longer shiny, then that means it's done. 
So that just means you took out no any low spots, any imperfections. Like I said, we blocked this one here out, but you can still see right there. Uh huh. That's still a small, tiny little low spot. I definitely need a lot more practice. I don't think that Will should leave me alone to work on this. So as you're doing that, you're also reading what you're seeing here. So you can see like, there's still after a couple of swipes, I just know you got a long ways to go. You can still see this is a low spot here, a little one there. You can't just come out here and just pick up a block and expect to do it just right. And you have to have the patience to actually learn how to do it, which she doesn't have. So her coming out here working is awesome, and I love it to death, but it's just not realistic on something that she'll be able to pick up. Okay. You, and then you just work your way back though, right? Yeah, and then if, once you get so all the way back, one. there were still like 12 inches of the door that we, so you just go all one way? I like to go one way all the off. way down okay. and then the next way all the way back. Okay. And a lot of times just a couple of passes will clean up little imperfections and low spots. Let's see it drive. Yeah, no kidding. Look forward to cruising around a big, big Bill Goldberg car. Oop, brakes work. Brakes work. Yeah. Look at that power steering. <laughs> <laughs> Armstrong power. <laughs> That'll give you Popeye arms. Yeah, it will. Do it! Oh yeah! Look at that, huh? Let that air run through Ooh. your hair, roll low. <laughs> Feel that sunshine? Feels good. Oh, that feels good. We'll arrive. Let's do it! Oh yeah! Look at that, huh? Let that air run through Ooh. your hair, roll low. <laughs> Feel that sunshine? Feels good. Oh, that feels good. We'll arrive. Everything's working great in it, shifting good, driving good, no howls, no whines, brakes don't pull, steering doesn't pull, got a couple of gauges we need to tweak around a little bit. Sure feels a lot better than an e-body, golly. It sounds solid and throaty. Yeah, I love it. Love it. I just wish I had power steering. Hey, good nice. job. Good job. High five. Nice work. High five. Yeah. We did it. As far as I'm concerned, uh, all systems are go to have a uh, phone call to Bill Goldberg, let him know that his car's ready. We do have a couple little gauges issues that we're gonna fix, but that's it. It ran and drove beautiful, steered great, everything worked like it was supposed to. No rattles, no, no rattles clunks, over the railroad no trucks. Car drives great, runs great. We're very happy with the, the outcome of it. Yeah, oh yeah, it's beautiful. I haven't had uh, driven in a, a Mopar convertible since 1990 when I sold my Challenger convertible, so. Yeah, it's a it was, different feel. It is, yeah, the B-bodies are awesome. I mean, they ride really nice, they're nice and heavy, just a nice, heavy, big car. Uh, it's got a ton of power. I mean, yeah. that thing was just, it pulls your neck it out. It felt good, it oh, felt yeah. really strong. Yeah, it pulled yeah. hard, that's yeah. a good one. That manual steering's not for <laughs> these little chicken wings, I'll tell you what. <laughs> what hell of a shine out here, too. <laughs> I'm sorry. You ever stop, buddy? Not really. You can call Mr. G, I guess I call him, I call him G. He's gonna come out and pick up his car, and that'll be exciting, that'll be exciting. Yep. Yeah, Why are well, you looking at me like that? It's gonna that? be awesome. I can't wait to meet him. That's gonna be cool. Well, like what? You're just paranoid. You and George get along really like good. I like the way he punched that pumpkin on the episode. Oh, yeah. That was awesome. Yeah, that was cool. I could have punched a pumpkin. That's cool. I mean, it wouldn't have done anything to a pumpkin, punch, but I could You punch a pumpkin it. every night. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Call it what you want. <laughs> Childish. Childish. <laughs> <laughs> this is a good one. All right, so you got a good feel for it. You can knock out the next one. Yeah, I think so. Perfect. You know why that's perfect? Why? Because now we're going to flip this car over and we got to do the whole other side. What? So we got, we got this side. I got the roof done already. We got pretty much got this side. So no. now we just gotta flip it over no, and then do the no, exact no. same process. Blocking is a lot harder than I thought it was. I have a much more appreciation for Will and what he does out in the shop. I appreciate oh, I you showing me and I definitely have the gist of it. Good. Um, but I have 
my dad has a couple things in the office he actually needs me to do. Really? What? Yeah, some clients to call and stuff. But I really appreciate your time. That was but it? That was, yeah, that's it. That's all I can do today. I'm sorry. Uh, Alyssa did as good as to be expected. It was her first time coming out there. Um, it's a dirty job. She came out kind of during one of the crappy points about getting a car ready. But for her first time, she did great. It was really cool to learn another aspect of the shop. I'd be okay if I never did it again, though, to be honest. <laughs> I don't really have the attention span for it. I'm not sure exactly what she was expecting. Um, you know, she's been working with Dave a lot recently, so a lot of it's just, hey, put on the new parts. It's nice, it's fun, it's clean. So I think she was in a little bit of a shock on how messy this job really is. So you're just gonna show up when it's time to do like the fun stuff like paintment? I'll probably show back up out here when he starts painting. I'm kind of interested to see what the process is there. Sure, I would oh. love to help. Now paint. how much time, because it takes you know three to five hours to paint one of these. You're gonna have that kind of time then? You know, she'll probably try to come in during like the last coat of clear, you know, like Mark used to do, uh, spray a little spot and say, oh my God, I got the whole car painted. So that's kind of what I'm expecting out of her now. Yeah, oh, oh. So just let done? me know, let me know the day. I'll block out that amount of time. I'll probably just, yeah, slide in there at the end and help with the paint job and take the glory. Okay. Well, I it guess I'll good. start back then good on the other on side. on the other side. Yeah. yeah See thanks. you in a couple, like a week. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for so. the, thanks for the help. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I guess. Will completed the blocking on the Phantom Cuda. Dave installed the headlights on the Roadrunner, and with Alyssa's help, they installed the taillights and bumper too. Mark finished the stripes on Goldberg's GTX so they could take it for its first test drive. And despite Will's allegations, Mark proved once and for all that he's more than just a check signer. What's happening, boss? Got some good news and bad news. Good news. Color looks great. I'm sorry? What I just you? didn't hear you what? You, you heard. No, I did the spray out. That looks good. Yeah. Color matches nice, which is crazy for huh. color. No, I Black color blind. You, you can have a parade if you want. You know, call the president. Maybe he'd like to have a special day for it. I'm color blind, but it doesn't matter because I just hit the color right on the money. How many tenths? But you did do this. Uh, how many tenths did I have? One. The one. Okay. I have a job to do. My job is to help him do his job. All right. Thank you. Well, wait, no, you said good news, good bad news. news. And bad news. Bad news is? It's Friday, it's five o'clock. Yes, it is. Friday, how do they say that in Spanish? Friday, Friday. It's still Friday. Friday, Bye. Friday, Bye. And your point? You know the point. Back to sign-in checks. Fire bullshit. Thank you, sir. Glad to see you're still able to sign checks. You have yourself a nice weekend, and I'll see you on Monday. I'm the chief around here, all right? I'm the guy that pushes the buttons. Sometimes, once in a great while, you got to know what button to push. Did you, did you answer the question? I did answer the question. That's the question. This is an OTF. Okay. What's the question again? 